Welcome to REST, which stands for Resiliency and Empowerment Seminar today. I am your host, Susan Gans, and I am the founder and strategic advisor with Gans Strategic Solutions, where we operate at the intersection of business and human behavior. This show is about talking to leaders of small to mid-sized businesses, as well as nonprofits. We hear the journeys of these leaders, how they're being resilient, and how they're being uh, empowering to themselves and others during this challenging time. Today, I'm so delighted to have Dr. Corinne Graham with us. I know Corinne personally through various groups that we've been involved in and various causes that we are passionate around, um, particularly diversity and inclusion and census and being community leaders. And um, Corinne, if you don't know her, is president of Graham International Consulting and Research Inc. and Designs by Dr. G, which is a New York State certified minority woman business enterprise. Dr. Graham has been recognized by many organizations. I'll highlight a couple. In 2019, she was recognized by the New York City Small Business Services for 2018 and 2019 Women Entrepreneurs NYC, her mentor role. She also was in the 200, uh, 2017 Long Island Business News class for top 50 most influential women in business. And she's also won Diversity and Business Awards in MWBE. She is a highly accomplished speaker, mentor, project manager, commercialization and technology transfer specialist, as well as a workforce and personal and professional development trainer and consultant to mid-sized, small, and startup businesses. You can find her designed by Dr. G online, the lifestyle online brand that offers several organic beauty, skincare, and clothing options, and importantly, has a 10% give back to charities. She's appeared in several publications, Huffington Post, Newsday, CBS 1010 Wins. Um, she has been in the community, for example, with the Town of Brookhaven Black History Commission member, an alumni board member of Nassau Community College, and chairs the Long Island Small Business uh, Groups Women in Business area. In addition to everything else, she's also a member <laughs> of the Farmingdale Planning IES. C conference, which is about international energy and sustainability, <laughs> amongst other things. Please welcome Dr. Corinne Graham to our show today. So excited to speak with you. <laughs> wow, Susan, that's a lot of stuff. Are you sure you're talking to the right person? I don't know. It's a lot yes, of things there, right? <laughs> you do a lot. So I wanted the audience to know that you do do a lot. I'm curious, Thank you. though. Where did that all come from? So take us back to the early part of your career journey and what were you interested in in that time and, and how did you wind your way to do all these different things? Wow, I guess in this kind of question, you kind of either have to just pick one point and start because you can't go back. It's gonna be a longer conversation, right? Um, so the long story short, I think growing up, I was around a lot of individuals in um, senior executive uh, roles, and I was very excited by that. And I thought that was what I, you know, where I'd ultimately be. The other bit was that I was fascinated. I love the sciences. Um, and one of my logos on our t-shirt tagline says, I love the sciences, but they don't love me back, right? <laughs> so here it is, fast forward. I, because of that love for, um, I'm, able to then get involved in many, many different things. Um, business was something that I was apparently very good at, but not something that was very sexy or interesting to me. And, um, you know, I had to, part of my career was getting pigeonholed in jobs that I didn't, you know, I was good at, but they weren't exciting. I started to saturate that sort of stuff. And what we typical millennials or, you know, um, young when we were much younger um i'm only 28 um I, I thought it was 25 but i was told 28 um 
uh, is we can move around, right? We have that agility to, you learn what you learn. And if you're not going to have the growth you need to, then you move on to another, you know, career and so on. And not with any animosity or ill feeling, just that's what we're, how growth happen. And I think just that is essentially how I kind of culminate the skill set that I have. I've been fortunate to be in a lot of different industry and a lot of different roles. Uh, one of my really earlier roles in my late teen was as a senior manager. So when I had to, when I wow. started back, when I relocated to the U.S., um, I had to start over. So then I'm starting from the bottom down again, going all the way back. And I think we all go through those journeys throughout our, our lives. So that's kind of ultimately how I've been fortunate, or you know. Um, to be able to build that skill set. I'm not afraid to learn. I want to know as much as I can. You know, that's the focus on personal professional development, you know, to the point of building resiliency. That's kind of what helps. If you don't build yourself, how are you going to be resilient? Absolutely. And I could imagine that you might have had some mentor. You certainly had influences, it sounds, uh, growing up by being surrounded by senior executives. Talk to us about mentors and sponsors and you, you might have had along the way uh, to help you in your journey. So for me, I think ultimately, uh, I'll always say, and I hold true to this, uh, just two people, right? Um, that's my mom and my dad, um, based on their journeys, what they were doing, how they were resilient. Um, my dad did not want my mom to work being a traditional, um, you know, male figure so on he wanted her to be able to do what he wasn't controlling but he knew that taking care of five kids is a lot of work by itself and she was not going to have that so she did whatever she could when she needed to without compromising herself which i totally respect her after having you know experienced life to wonder how one is able to be able to do that especially when you have kids and it's you know troubling times uh, that sort of stuff. So both my parents actually are, are, were my, my mentors, I would say. I had really great teachers throughout my, my life. So they would always, wherever it is that they would pay attention to the things that I was really good at and helped to hone in and allow me to really be me. Um, uh, similarly, they're, you know, in church, their individuals that respected or admire or, or, or did. It wasn't, uh, oh, you're my mentor. It's just really that synergy and those energies that sync up and you learn. One part of you know, learning is really listening. So even when I was with, most of these were male figures that were in senior and top management, I just listened and observed them in, in every situation that I was privy to. So I understood a lot of things um, prior to even, you know, starting to work myself. So that's exciting to have all these people surrounding you and a strong grounding with, with your parents. And out of curiosity, where do you fit <laughs> in to the five children? Oh, I'm the mother hen. I'm grandma. <laughs> You're the eldest. So, that was going to be yeah. my guess. But <laughs> yeah. Yep, You're yep. taking the lead. I'm sure that your mm -hmm. siblings do look up to you and are amazed at your accomplishments. So uh, tell us about what your core leadership values are and then how they show up in your different settings, whether it's professional or personal or community. How do the, What are those values and how do they show up? So um, there are quite a few of them, and it's hard to pick any one. Uh, one of my core value, honestly, outside of um, family, which is ultimately my core value, or family is, to the, as you were saying, you know, my siblings um, probably respect and admire me. I don't even look at it in, in that sense, but I think I'm fortunate to know that they do have some amount of respect in terms of what it is because I never forced anything of what I was or who I was onto them, but sort of led by example and allow them to be themselves, right? And yes. I think that was one of the things I think that I benefited from where they can come to me and talk to me about every and anything. The other bit I, I believe for me is fundamentally being someone who is Christian. I'm uh, my, my values around is around the teachings of the Bible. And I look at it, especially the book of Proverbs, where it talks about life 
and and day-to-day things like do unto others what you would want them to do unto you. It's not in there, but I'm just saying it just in general. And that says a lot. Love your neighbor as yourself. We know the times we're living in, right? And um, if you do these things, you know, um, they're greater and lesser individuals than ourselves. Then we have to also be humble in whatever it is or career is in whatever it is that we're doing because time changes, right? And I think those fundamentally help me to always try to be my best self around others. I'm not trying to judge their situation, but to understand and see how best I can help them. And maybe I can't, but maybe I will know or have access or can point them in a direction that will help or be a benefit to them. And I love um, your values about being really a go giving type of leader, a, a, a servant leadership being about being mindful of, of others. Is that, is that fair? Yes. I very, very much so. It's it. I would never have thought about it in that way, but as I've been privy and fortunate to be able to um, see life through others, the, their lenses it makes a difference. You know, I'm not that, you know, ego little girl that, oh, I know everything and so on. And this is the way to do it and, and so forth. And one of the, the, the awakenings for me throughout life journey actually came to um, when I, I was one, uh, I facilitated the Dress for Success program, Going Places Network. It was for the entire Long Island and the town of Brookhaven um, uh, runs that. Um, I think now it's divided into uh, Nassau and Suffolk County, but you got to really listen to stories, right? Outside of me having six or 800 employees at any given time from ages 14 all the way up to 75 or 76 or training individuals within those, the, you know, those age groups, you really learn a lot about, it's not about you, but ultimately what it is that you have that can help someone else reach their goal. And it's mutual, you know, it's mutual. You will grow, you will get business. Um, it, it works out. That's so amazing. And it just also talked to the point about empowerment, right? So you sharing your wisdom and also learning from, from others is also empowering them to be the best mm-hmm. versions of themselves. Can you tell us more about how you define or how you promote empowerment in yourself and in others? So for me, empowerment begins first with enlightenment. If you're not enlightened, you can't be empowered. I don't, I know people will want to, or others will want to say otherwise, but think about it. If you don't know what you don't know, how can you empower, right? You have to start somewhere. You have to understand. Enlightenment is understanding. When I understand something, then I'm empowered to know how to do that. Um, I don't want to, you know, uh, talk about like things like you think about like, you know, domestic abuse or, or so on. It's when someone is reaching out and no one is there, right? Or if they're suicidal and no one is there. How do you let them, you can't empower without enlightening, right? They have to understand where it is or how they feel, be comfortable with that so that they can then, empowerment is then the resources and the tools that then helps them to be their best self. Absolutely. So, so important. And I just wanted to pick up on, on this word about enlightenment and I think that's an important point especially with conversations these days um, opening Mm -hmm. up about uh, race and recognizing um, um, people of color and bringing that into the forefold to have these very uh, brave conversations conversations that maybe in the past would have been held down are now um, we're opening up and having those conversations. So what can you say around awareness and enlightenment and how, how can we um, together as a community um, inspire enlightenment amongst um, the community? Um, I think it's part of storytelling and being your authentic self, 
if you can't speak your truth and you're not one with your truth, then your message is not going to resonate with someone else. If I have experienced something I might be ashamed of because I don't want anybody else to think that it is. And others who want to be bullied or don't have that understanding, right, or have not built up empathy because they don't understand something, can't really uh, get that kind of that that insight and that becomes of how you share your story in in the group or the setting that you're in if i'm with um when i do workshops or i'm training and i'm in if i'm in middle school i'm not talking to those kids the same way or students the same way i'm talking to someone who's in high school or college or who's gone through a certain situation we have to tell the story and we don't have to tell all the story part of enlightenment is allowing this, the others to um, be comfortable to then share their stories. So if I can share and we're talking about something and someone is talking about, for example, um, uh, sex trafficking and so on, and we can say, well, you know, a lot of times people don't understand how this happens or how, okay, abuse happened in the home. Um, I've had stories where the children are together and it happens is that there's room under it's a friend and there's room under the bed and all of a sudden you don't see and that is happening right under the eyes of the parent or the the the, the sibling and you're not aware and that child is not going to say whatever else it is but it's a way to share story and it's like oh wow um i really never thought about things like that or or that setting so when you share a story i think you want to share of yourself and also not where you are sharing in terms of ego i think that's where humility comes into play because we're all we are familiar with first impression we're always judging it, even if we know each other the first the second you see or you know based on you know or kareen looks like she's mad right and then this armor or suit goes on to deal with that that kind of response so i i think it's really being very sensitive to um uh the environment you're in you really have to be and know the story that is going to be applicable and not make it about you and allow the individuals who are there to share and just guide their conversation because each will have their own aha moment. Someone else, for example, when I've done my fireside chats, I think you've been privy to it. Yeah. 10, you know, I've had individuals, you know, Tyler's been on there and a female will say, Oh, I love his story. I, I, I connect with his story and you would not necessarily see because you could say there's race, there is gender, or whatever the nuances or certain cultural differences, um, you know, all of these pieces. And I think that's what, what you allow. You allow people to really share and others will bond and, and then get to see it. I don't know if that makes any sense. Yes, it, it does. I've been learning a lot through your words here um, about allowing individuals to be themselves to guide the conversation and i think that's the hardest part is getting the conversation started um where people might have some hesitancies about sharing to to be take a risk because they don't know how it's going to be received or being thinking that you know it, maybe it's not resonating but it sounds like what you're saying is just you know trust yourself and just be you and you know i i tell uh people when i'm mentoring them or coaching them just be you because you do the best version of you so it, it sounds like that's that's the message that you're also sharing uh with folks around that let's talk about resiliency so what does that mean to you how have you been resilient especially during this time and in the past so, you know, one of the, it's, um, you know, Dr. Oliver, you had her on your yeah. program before and one of her chat, we're talking about it. And she's like, you know, one of the things I like about you and I, you know, I have admired is that prior to all this, you were already, you already pivot. And, you know, people talk about your, you know, you, you have an MBA and so on, you know, in school, we learn these words and people are like, oh, these words don't mean anything and they don't have anything or, you know, now they're using it and it's not new. It's been around pivoting the, the ability to be able to, to really transition and transcend really, you know, you want to say quickly, but within, with, within reason, right? It's, it's not think about the balancing of 
things. What are you looking at and what's out there? I'm always wanting to learn and to grow. And part of having a business um, we take for granted is that it's, it's not easy. Every day, day in, day out is a challenge. You might have something great. One of my, um, when I started, you know, I, I failed. It wasn't my intention to fail, you know, but in situation happens, contracts are pull. And it's like the day before, two days before you were to start. How are you going to plan for that? Just starting out, right? Um, you have colleagues who are working with you and, you know, contracts that you're supposed to have. Uh, then gets pulled and they're not small. And now you have all these expenses and overhead that you need to take care of. So it's the ability to really um, see what's out there and not be limited and restricted. Our, you know, our tagline for the consulting firm is transforming um, visions into the possibilities. Then I found over the, you know, the years, a book that was an executive book of quotes that was given to me to one of my first bosses. Um, this was like my more teenage years. It had um, two things. One is if you don't risk anything, you risk even more. The only limits are always those of vision. And that's it in, in a nutshell. If you can't see that there are opportunities and you're going to not be able to navigate or take that leap of faith, right? It's not going to be easy. No one said it what it will be. But if it's something that's in your wheelhouse, it's a passion, you, can, you will be happy with whatever that is, right? You know, what, what this pandemic in our lifetime has taught us is all these things that we made excuses for. Oh, you know, Suzanne, I can't see you. I'm so busy. Oh, Suzanne, you know, it, you know you're blowing it off for anyone for that matter. Oh, I can't take this vacation because of, oh, I can't afford to do this what did it show us, right? What did it tell us? All these things to me are excuses. So I try not to, to that point of me, even when I reflect is, you know, what is, it's, it's a quote from one of the passages, you know, what is honoring to God? What is honoring to others, right? What is the right thing? What is going to make someone feel special or important? And then you make it really around those things and always do the right thing. So if I'm looking for things and it didn't work out, it is not the end of the world, right? Sure, I'm going to be a little sad and frustrated, but that's it. Resiliency is something that one's constantly doing it. And as humankind or mankind or the race, we are doing this all the time, day in, day out, right? As we get older, we are risk averse. Why? Why? Why are we building up this ego and these barriers when we've overcome a lot of other challenges? So it's constant. Yes, it's a great <laughs> reminder. I didn't think about all the daily um, challenges and call them micro pivot points that we might make. Could be meetings are canceled or like you said, contracts are, are pulled or delayed or deferred or what have you. Um, so it's a great perspective. And I want to also touch upon failure, as you said, you know, about the failure and the pull of contracts, yet that didn't stop you. So tell our audience how you dealt with that from a, a, a mindshare perspective, how, how you reoriented it so you didn't let that limit you. I, I, you know, I don't know. I guess failure is not an option. And going back to as I was sharing with my, you know, with my, my parents, um, even I, I didn't share their story, but even what my dad went through to be able, you know, he had a middle income, middle class sort of job for certain things. He was an entrepreneur for many years before and after taking care of, you know, his, his siblings side of the family, his mom, and then us and then other family members. Um, I think I never saw them ever failing, right? So it was never even in the circle of people that I was around. That discussion about failure wasn't there. I think it's you have challenges or obstacle and you build on it. I think we internalize failure to ourselves to that we are not enough, we're not enough or it's on us that we did something and it builds, it's our self-confidence, right? It's our ego. So once we get over that, you know, you know, part of it is, yeah, you know, here it is. I want to be whatever it is. I jokingly say, hopefully it could happen. A multi-billionaire. You heard me say this all the time. People hear me say it in jest, but it's possible. I don't know that it will happen, but 
I know there is greater good or greater things that I'm supposed to be able to do. And I have to get over me, right? Because the only obstacle really in this story is me. And I have to come to terms with, okay, I did everything that I needed to do, but I cannot control the outcome because someone else or other people are involved, right? What is the lesson learned from this? How do I prepare for it? What are the options do I have? Is it the end of the world? Um, and the answer is no. The answer is always, no matter what predicament we find ourselves in, even health or emotionally or physically, it's never the end, right? So it really is a mindset. Absolutely. Mindset is, is key, as you know. So tell us about what you would like people to walk away from our conversation today. What are the key points you want them to remember? Um, I think, if anything, I, I focus on this personal and professional development. Develop self. Always, you know, be out there looking at what it is. Be true to what it is that is your passion. It doesn't mean that you can't have a regular job or two other regular jobs. But understand that and understand what it is that you are to others so that you can really embrace it and offer that because they need it. And you will walk away always feel uh, better. You should always be in a stage of learning. It doesn't matter who you are or whatever else it is. Attend webinars, attend networking events. You, you, you never know when or how that's going to be um, important. And I think you know, that enlightens you for anything that you might be pigeonholed in within yourself. It allows enlightenment, which by, you know, default um, allows for empowerment for you to become your better self. And, and so I love what you're saying here about always be learning and it doesn't matter the age. I'm inspired by a read story about somebody going back to get their MBA at age 76. And so no limits right? Age doesn't mm -hmm. matter. We can no. all learn something and to really embrace um, the person that we are inside and let that shine on the outside. So beautiful words by you today, Dr. Corinne Graham. How can we find you? Because we want people to find you. Um, so thank you. Um, and thanks for being a part of it and for, you know, doing what you do and continue to share. Um, and, and storytelling is a big part of where we are today and all the stories uh, will touch in different individuals and help. Um, so keep doing what you're doing and continued success. Uh, for Thank me, you. it's kind of tough, um, but I will, uh, because we have both companies, I will push for uh, the designs by drg.com uh, only because you can email whichever one and you'll find out more about us. You can check us out on Facebook. It's G I C A R. I N C and for that page you can you know you can connect with us um, it's pretty active um, send us some matches and it will take you to the consulting uh, page as well so that's designs drg.com and then on Facebook I didn't quite get the um, wording so I wanted you to do it again so people know okay so it's G I C A R I and C. So Graham International Consulting and Research. If you look it up, Facebook, you'll find it. Perfect. And designs by Dr. G .com. Got it. So that's G I C A R I N C in Facebook. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So really want to thank you for, for sharing your journey with us today. I'm, I'm very inspired and motivated by um, our conversation and to our audience, encourage you to, to be your authentic selves. Don't hold back. Take those risks. Because I think what you're hearing from our guests today, that that investment does pay off over time. Until the next conversation. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome.